Hello and welcome back. So today I'd like to talk about Dido Krishnamurti's saying or quote, the observers, the observed. He said this numerous times. He's, uh, it's a very important aspect of what he's saying. I made a video a while back and I explained it as concisely as I possibly could using Isaac Newton as an example. So even though this story was only used by science teachers to explain the law of gravity, <laughs> there's a story that Isaac Newton sat under a tree and suddenly he was hit on the head by an apple, obviously because he was sitting in an apple tree. <laughs> well, and then from there, Isaac Newton looked at the apple falling down from the tree to the earth and he deduced the law of gravity. Now, if Isaac Newton would have had a very frail or superstitious ego, then he would have sat under the tree and he would have gone, why on earth did that tree hit me on the head with an apple? What did I do to that tree? Why did that tree choose me to hit in the head with an apple? Now, if he would have done that, it would have been pretty hard for him to deduce the law of gravity. It probably would have been way easier for him to deduce that all apple trees are evil and Adam and Eve's story was the prequel to the evil apple saga. <laughs> anyway, this sounds a bit weird because you wouldn't think that you can't really blame an apple tree for hitting you in the head. Well, the thing is, is that we do this in our everyday life all the time. If someone comes up to me and steals from me or lies to me or ignores me or is unkind for no reason, instead of looking at the person that's being unkind to me for no reason, I take it personally and I think, now how could he have done that to me? I've been so nice and all I've given up and then this person turns around and steals from me <laughs> and we take it personally but if we look at what is and then we see that we didn't do anything wrong <laughs> we didn't do anything to deserve it if we did do something to deserve it usually we know <laughs> if we didn't do anything to deserve it there's no point thinking about why this person did this to me, why I somehow was responsible for this maltreatment and nothing I do in, nothing I can change in, the beha in my behavior would stop this person from stealing from me or lying or whatever it may be. So we always, th or our ego thinks, that it's far more important than it actually is because it thinks that it's responsible for everything that happens in its world. But unfortunately, well, it's not, it's not really unfortunate, it's just the way of life. People do mean, cruel, unkind things and there are people that are nothing but ego and they will milk you <laughs> until there's nothing left. And the longer that we allow our ego to take responsibility and we think that we had some sort of influence in this maltreatment, the harder it is to see what is. And what is, is two human beings. One human being is doing nothing. And the second human being is being malevolent, is being aggressive, is being abusive, is being unkind, unfair. When I went to go listen to the Observer, the Observed, I was actually probably in the process of, 
process of understanding to the Krishnamurti's, you know, the essence of everything he's saying. So I was already on the brink. And I distinctly remember that understanding observer the, is the observed was one important milestone in my understanding. So I've always been rather keen on books. Well, I used to be rather keen on books and I used to read a lot and I was very interested in the way that people tell stories. And the first thing that came to my mind when I listened to The Observer is The Observed for, like the way that I used it for my own purposes was, ah, okay, so The Observer is The Observed. So I, the human being, I get to observe my life from the first-hand perspective. That's the ideal. But if I have an ego and I live my life directed by the ego, the ego always tends to put everything in third-person perspective because (laughs) the ego isn't um, privileged enough to be allowed to sit in the driver's seat. So... Let's say I go to a party and somebody is unfriendly to me. If I go to the party and and I live as the observer, so I live my life in first-person perspective, and I go to the party and I talk to this person, perfectly nice conversation, and then suddenly the person says something unkind to me, like something offensive, right? Now... If I had an ego that was in control of this conversation, um, I know that back in the day I would have gone, oh my God, like I must have said something or what is it about me or why did that person pick me out of everybody and what do I need to change to avoid this happening to me? So I would have gone into this tailspin of trying to fix what I did wrong. That was my response. And now if I went to a party and somebody's unkind to me or cruel, then because I am living my life from the first person perspective, I don't have a sense of past or a sense of insecurity. I just witness what is happening. And what is happening is I'm speaking to a person and then without any particular provocation, the person will be unkind. So how does that have anything to do with me? (laughs) My ego always wants to put itself in the mix and wants to feel important or feel hurt or feel injured or in need of solace (laughs) Um, but people do things that are not kind or not necessarily (laughs) helpful or friendly or you know I could have just annoyed the person I can't change that if I annoyed the person okay but usually you see that it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the other person needing some sort of reaction or some sort of, they want something out of you. And as soon as you don't, like if they say something rude and you just nod your head or laugh it off (laughs) because you know it has nothing to do with you. It's just their pathetic attempt to, gauge a reaction from you and as soon as you see it from that point of view instead of taking it personally first of all it's a very big step or an easy step or to me it was a very very decisive important step to live without an ego because as soon as I would take a step back and and try and explain the situation of what happened. Oh, this person came in and then I did this and this. As soon as I do that, that's third-person perspective. That's the ego 
And the ego always adds and embellishes and changes situations a little bit. No one has a perfect memory anyway. And the ego always has a motive. So it always narrated a certain way to make itself the victim or the hero or the whatever it may be, whatever your ego is into. <laughs> um, most, well, if you, if you look at what your ego wants, you'll probably find out that at a very early stage in childhood, that is what was necessary to get the attention of your parents or to survive as a child in a scary world and confusing world. But now as an adult, as a free, independent, autonomous human being, the ego is slowing you down. It's impeding your fun. It's stopping you from enjoying the full beauty of your life. So I hope this helps. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.